All right, it's demo day, and we're filling the garage up, getting ready to paint in the house. It's a mess out here, but next phase is going to make this house look a lot better. Well, this isn't good. Let's see, city of Carrierville. Notice a violation. Another beautiful morning. So I figured we'd go look at some properties. We're going to Germantown and Carrieville. Mm -hmm. We've got two houses going on out there. Bought these, uh, really bad condition, and now we're gonna fix them up. The one in Germantown had a, a pool in the backyard and the homeowner rented a Bobcat, filled it in himself. So very home style <laughs> job. So I had to have my guy come out with a bulldozer, completely remove the pool, the skirt, all the equipment and hopefully they're laying sod today. Um, then the inside, he's just a hand, he was a handyman that didn't do anything fully. So we're fixing a lot of mistakes made over 30 years of somebody trying to do the home improvements on their own. <laughs> um, when we get finished with it though, I love that we have options. Options and what I look for in investments more than return. Like I, I wanna know that I can rent this house I could sell it to a homeowner. I could move in the house. I've got just tons of options. If I rent it, which is my plan, uh, Germantown, if anybody watching doesn't know, is one of the highest income uh, cities in the, in the Tennessee per capita over the past 20 years. So it's where a lot of people are moving to to get into some great schools, super low crime. Um, it'll rent for $3,200 a month. So it's definitely, definitely an executive level rental not your typical rental in Memphis. What I would say though is an underserved market. Nobody uh, on mass scale is buying houses in Germantown, fully renovating them, offering them for rent. And there's a big demand for that. Memphis has a lot of uh, people moving in for corporate jobs, international papers up here on our left. We'll be passing that in just a second. Their world headquarters is here in Memphis, Tennessee. Same with FedEx, St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Nike has a huge distribution center and middle management offices out in Carrieville. So we get a ton of people coming in town and they are moved to Memphis for their job. And maybe they aren't ready to buy a house as soon as they move here. They want to figure this place out, see what the best neighborhood for their family is. Um, or they have a home to sell where they're moving from. So they need to rent until they figure out that next phase of life. I run a lot of houses like this to people that have gone through a divorce. So maybe they're in a large home and after the divorce, neither husband or wife can afford to keep that large house on their own. They don't want to move to another city, get their kids out of the schools that they're used to. So they're looking for a rental for the next two to five years till they figure out their next phase of life. Um, once I've rented it, two to five years from now when it goes vacant. Again, I have options. It's appreciated in value, depending on where our economy is at that time. Um, I could refinance it, cash out, use that cash to go buy more investment properties or just rent it again. And the, there's more and more options. So if you're ever pigeonholed into one exit strategy, so in your C-class and even D-class communities, you can get pigeonholed into, okay, I want to liquidate this asset and your only option is to sell to another investor. So that's not very um, flexible. It's not very liquid. So that's one of these th things these executive level rentals do is gives me, they give me more options. Um, they attract the type of tenant that's going to take better care of the property, stay in it longer. Statistics show us. Here's the other part to it. And it sounds a little, tough, but sometimes you have to be tough when you own properties. If I rent this house to somebody for $3,200 a month, they're going to have a 650 or better credit score. They're going to have savings in the bank. They're going to have garnet, uh, wages I could garnish if worst case scenario, because everybody talks about the worst case scenario. It's extremely rare that someone completely trashes your house. It's a much more rare in an executive level rental. But if I rent this house to someone and they're a great renter, but then something changes in their life. They get hooked on drugs. They start, you know, dating. 
somebody that's a bad influence. I don't know what, it, what the situation could be and they destroy my house, $10,000 worth of damage to get this house rent ready again. I'm gonna sue them. I'm gonna win, but the big one is I'm gonna collect. Courts don't collect for you. So if you have a $50,000 rental in a tough part of town and they tear it up, you can sue them, you can win, but good luck collecting. Like, what are you gonna collect? Are you gonna garnish the wages of the person that was renting a $500 a month house? That's not even worth suing them. It's not worth the legal um, cost to go after that person. So in this scenario, the person renting from me has some skin in the game. And that's what I really uh, like about these executive level rentals is that they, if they were to tear my house up, super rare, something like that would happen, that I could actually go after them, win, and collect. So this section in Germantown, um, built in the late 60s through the early 80s. A lot of two-story um, homes and then ranches. So your two-story homes are usually a box on a box, meaning the lower square footage is nearly equal to the upstairs square footage. Your ranch style homes are smaller in square footage, but sell for a large amount per square foot. You'll always see somebody out walking the dog, riding the bike, especially on a pretty day like today. Super low crime in this area, high income per capita in these neighborhoods as well. Huge appreciation. They aren't building any more $350,000 homes in Germantown. So a new construction house in Germantown, you'd be lucky to break in at $600,000 if you can find that opportunity. So if you wanna live in Germantown, you know, under half a million, you're buying a house like this. The one we're headed to is a four bedroom, two and a half bath home. After a full renovation, it'll be worth $335,000 as a rental, collect $3,200 a month in rent is our projected rent. And uh, for a homeowner, $335,000 home in Germantown, highly desirable. It wouldn't stay on the market more than two days in the current environment. All right, so check out in the garage, you'll see that we've just pulled sheetrock and old cabinets and all the junk out. I'll use this as a staging area until we pull in a dumpster. All this will be transferred into the dumpster. Let's check out the backyard. So there was a huge pine tree here overhanging the house and it was dropping pine needles on the roof, just completely destroying the house. So first thing I did was have this pine tree removed then I replaced the roof. There was a cypress tree in this area. I hated to cut it down, a beautiful cypress tree, but it was growing towards the house, overhanging the sunroom. So we, we took it down, ground the stump, and in this area was an in-ground pool. So the in-ground pool was not worth saving. So I had my guys come out with the bulldozers, completely clear this area out. We've cut a swell down through here and when we install the, the sod, this will be a beautiful, beautiful backyard for a family to enjoy. All right, it's demo day, and we're filling the garage up, getting ready to paint in the house. It's a mess out here, but next phase is gonna make this house look a lot better. Woo, we're gonna go through three dumpsters of trash just to get this house cleared out. That's step one, anytime we buy a house, Demo day, then we roll in, get the ceiling smooth, do any sheetrock repair, and it's off to the races. Full, full renovation on its way. What is your lighting gonna be like in here? Okay. All right, so we're in the house now. One of the first things I wanna point out is the ceilings. So we scraped all that popcorn ceiling off sanded it down, mudded it, so now it has the more up-to-date look of a smooth ceiling. That's one of the things that adds a lot of value. It doesn't cost a lot of money, it's just a lot of labor. We've covered the hardwood floors that are in here because we'll come in, we'll sand these, refinish them, they'll look like new when we're finished. 
in the kitchen, we've removed the cabinets. On the bottom side, we're raising this floor up one inch, and then we're going to tile the kitchen all the way through the front door with the same tile. We'll be re replacing the kitchen cabinets, painting the upper kitchen cabinets white to bring them into you know today's standards, new appliances, new granite countertops, and then coming back to the back of the home, check out this sunroom that the previous owner built. Gorgeous job. It's got a, what we call a split unit. A split unit heat and cools a room like this. You might have seen one in a hotel room or a sunroom like this, and it works really well. So this thing will freeze you out. Check out all the windows. Uh, we had a couple of broken windows. That looking into the new backyard after I put the sod in, it'll make it absolutely a cool little living space. Not heated and cooled square footage that'll count for your appraisal, but imagine a young family when they see this, this is going to really attract them. They can come out here and have barbecues, have family over, overflow room when you're having um, you know, Thanksgiving and Christmas. So it's not part of the home when it comes to heated and cool square footage. So it doesn't add that much value for the appraisal. But man, this makes the house a lot more livable. Let's go in and check out the rest of the house. All right, so one of two living areas in this house. This uh, home has two living areas downstairs, dining room, kitchen, half bath. Upstairs, all the bedrooms. A lot of people really like that in the Germantown area. Uh, just imagine you have friends and family over. Don't worry about the kids making the bed. Only family's going to go up there. You party on the bottom, live up top, I guess you could say. So this takes us back into the foyer. And the stairs on this house were covered in carpet. I pulled the carpet up, and guess what I found? Beautiful hardwood stairs. It doesn't look too good now, but we'll sand these down. We'll stain them. They'll look brand new. Let's go upstairs and check this out. These walls were all weird texture, so I just completely ripped them out, replaced with sheetrock. So this would be the master suite, so large enough for a king-size bed, two nightstands, and a dresser. It's got its own uh, bathroom connected to the bedroom with a stand-up shower, toilet, and vanity that'll be, the tops will be replaced, new sink, new fixtures. And you tell me in the comments below, that shower has a gold uh, shower frame. Is that too bad or should I replace it with something more modern like the nickel? Just curious what you guys think. As we come through, it's about $1,000, so is it worth the money, I guess is the question. So bedroom two. At this point, I'd like to show you the windows in this house. So these windows, the previous owner replaced them using Sears, the company that where you know, we all used to shop. They have a home improvement side to their business and they're double paying vinyl with low E and argon. So argon is a gas in between the two panes of the uh, window, makes it more energy efficient. The low E is a tent to the window that keeps out UV rays. So great windows in this house. It's about $20,000 of the windows in this house. I got those as kind of an added bonus. And that's why I was able to pay a little bit more for this house. This room, a little funky, tiny little room, but make a great in-home office or walk-in closet. So maybe you could put a desk here for the kids. Um, it's not a bedroom because it does not have a closet and it's definitely not big enough for a bed. Let's go out this way and we'll see the, another full bath. So another full bath here, it's awful dark in there, so not a whole lot to see. And then two more bedrooms. So these two bedrooms, large enough for uh, queen size or full bed, bunk beds. This is a perfect house for a little family looking to get their kids in a great school system. This house will appreciate over time. And you've heard me talk about my definition of appreciation. True appreciation comes from homeowners desperately wanting to live in an area. In this uh, Germantown community, we're seeing bidding wars. If I listed this house for sale to homeowners, we would have 40 showings in the first day. We'd have above list price uh, offers and people would be bidding for this house. So this is a perfect little house for a, a family in Germantown. So that's the upstairs, four bedroom, two full bath. Downstairs, you have a half bath, and <clears throat> we're about halfway finished with the renovation. Once we finish with the exterior, we'll tackle the exterior and bring it to 2020 standards as well.
So a lot of people that I work with are from all over the country use the word cul-de-sac. In the South, we call it a cove. So Londonderry Cove, uh, you come in, there's a little you know, circular area. A lot of people are attracted to this. My wife loves it because it's low traffic. Great place to raise a little family. Swing around this way. Let's get the uh, house in the background. Just a tank of a house. This house is uh, low maintenance. It's got vinyl siding, brick, vinyl windows, interior full renovation. Exterior is about to get its full renovation. When it's finished, we'll come out and do a, a post renovation video for you guys. So we hopefully at two o'clock or three o'clock we'll knock your house out. Okay. You're the man. So they're on the 18 wheeler headed to Memphis is where they are. Right. Well, this isn't good. Let's see, city of Carrierville. Notice a violation. Whew, they just want me to cut the grass. That's not too bad. I thought it was gonna be something major. All right, let's get in here and check this thing out. So we bought this house. The guy hadn't lived here for four years. And anytime you're dealing with a neighborhood like Carville where you know price per square foot's gone through the roof, the way to get the maximum value out of your property is to add square footage. It cost a fortune to add square footage to the back of the house, like to add another bedroom or bath. But if it has an attic space, where you can just go up, that's where you can really add some value. So I added in a stairwell and took the attic and made it a fourth bedroom, uh, adding about 200 square feet. At $176 a square foot, that was money well spent to you know, bring this thing higher in value. Now that included rerouting the air conditioner. So you can see I have a air intake running up the wall here. We had to cut out. I'll have to come back in with a sheetrock, of course, and fix all of this. The framing alone was probably $4,500, $2,000 just in material. And then upstairs, we'll spend another $3,000. You can do the math. You know that that's good numbers. The floors were all carpet. We'll come in. We'll put uh, some hardwood in. We painted the walls gray, white trim, a darker gray on the... Um, the brick fireplace, which was a pink brick. <laughs> There's a funny little wall here separating the dining room and the living room. We could have knocked that out, but it didn't look bad. So we painted that pink brick. It'll have a good look when it's finished. Turn some lights on here. If I were to be picky, this house has a tiny kitchen. But what I like doing with a tiny space is coming in and just modernizing it. So these cabinets had a funky little trim from 1980 at top. I just removed it. Now it has a nice clean shaker look. These cabinets were of a cherry color. So it reminded me of grandma's house back in the eighties. We primered and then painted with a oil-based paint. We came in, installed Dallas white granite with one deep sink, the new faucet. Let me show you this faucet. I'm proud of my faucet. So let me tell you the story on this. This is the faucet that I use in almost every house. So single faucet, gooseneck, super clean, simple. This company launched about three years ago and we're selling this on Amazon for $18. To put that in perspective, a nice kitchen faucet can go up to $1,500. This faucet at Lowe's would be $65. So I bought 50 of them, 50 at $18 and 75 cents going off memory, free shipping with Prime. Today, this faucet sells for $35. And I'm, I'm sure that soon as this company continues to grow, they'll be in the $60 range. So anytime I find a good value like that, I buy one, I try it out. And if I love it, then man, I'll just go ahead and buy 50 of them. We're probably down to about 20 of them now. I should have bought 100. After installing that Dallas white granite with a single gooseneck faucet, you see the uh, subway tile. So this is what's in style. This is what all the ladies like, what you see on HGTV. We'll be installing a, a stainless steel dishwasher, range, and vent -a hood, which will complete this small kitchen, but it'll be very much more modern than it was before. All right, so back through the living room. 
You have a washer dryer area behind these doors. Master bedroom, the floors will be replaced. We've already painted uh, new light fixtures throughout. This house has a nice master bath that didn't need much upgrading. So even though the um, countertops are a little bit aged, jacuzzi tub, stand up shower, for a rental property, the money is in the kitchen, the living area. As long as the bathrooms and bedrooms are functional, you're good. You're coming through this way, you've got a second full bath, two bedrooms that are all big enough for a queen size bed, one nightstand and a dresser. Let's go back around this way and we'll check out what we did upstairs. So this will have a handrail, carpet on the stairs. This is definitely a work in progress, but this made a fourth bedroom. So big bedroom, big enough for king size bed, two nightstands and a dresser. Over here, I framed in a big walk-in closet that'll have double doors. You'll step in, you'll have shelves. I'll put a false wall here, so it'll be a nice big walk-in closet. It'll be like having two master bedrooms, four bedroom, two and a half bath in Carryville, Tennessee. This is how you can really add value, is anytime you can find square footage. Yeah, it was expensive to do this, but it added another $30,000 worth of value to the property. And I'm sure this is why we get the fine. So the, the backyard, the grass has grown up a little bit. No big deal. We'll get out here and cut it, pay our fine, learn our lesson. But this is one of the things that attracted me to this house. This homeowner put in an outdoor living area. Um, the house has a newer roof, vinyl siding, and bricks. So it's bulletproof. Very little maintenance on the, this house. New roof, no large uh, branches overhanging the, the roof. Vinyl siding and brick. That's the kind of property I'm attracted to. So I hope you enjoyed this tour of a house in Carryville. This will be one of our executive level rentals, meaning uh, it's higher in price, lower returns on paper, but it's gonna attract the type of tenant that's gonna take better care of the property, like they're the owner, they're gonna stay longer, and this house is gonna appreciate year over year because they're not building houses in Carryville under $500,000. So when you can pick up something for $260,000, $265,000, fully renovated and tenanted, that's the type of investment we're looking at here. So thanks for uh, your time. If you've got questions, go to turnkeyinvest.com. Check out this video. And if you, if you really wanna learn more about our management side, check out some of our videos in the link below. The, I'll have the link in the description below, foundationpm.com to learn about our property management company.